Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I'm so excited to share three beautiful projects with you made using the Dahlia Days bundle from the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. Now this is a bundle that I have had on my craft shelf for, I'm sad to say, months. Um, I actually purchased it during the pre-order. Actually, no. Yes, I did. I purchased it during the pre-order in December and it's been sitting there since. I've been so busy with other things. So today is the day I'm going to uh, show you this amazingly beautiful bundle and share some um, springy um, dreaming of warmer temperatures and green grass kind of projects. So let's see who is here. I'm just going to pull up my video on my iPad. See if we come up. There we are. Let's see who's here. Oh, hi, Judy from Wawa. Hi, Sonia. Thank you for sharing, Sonia. Hi, Karen. How are you doing? So, um, as I mentioned, we are all about the Dahlia Days bundle. Um, this is a bundle that, um, it's pretty average priced for um, stamp and die bundles in the Stampin' Up! catalog. Um, it retails here in Canada for $76.50. That's the discounted bundle price. And um, it has so many beautiful possibilities. Now, if you, last year during Celebration, um, redeemed for the, what was it called? Something Dahlia's, the, the beautiful big Dahlia stamp set during celebration. This one is a perfect complement to it. Um, I still have my, I, my I think it's Dazzling Dahlia's or Detailed Dahlia. I can't remember what the stamp set was. You know which one I'm talking about if you've been around uh, for even a year. It was one of the celebration stamp sets and it coordinates beautifully with um, this stamp set. So this would be a great addition to it. Um, it's got some beautiful greenery, some lovely sentiments and great fonts and I'm going to show them to you. So let me see who else has joined us. Oh, we got lots joining us today. Hello, Doris. Hi, Diane. Hi, Mavis. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Tracy. You made it on time. Oh, it's spring break for you. We have ours is next week, Tracy. <laughs> Counting the days, the minutes even. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi, Violet. Violet and Judy are both watching from Wawa today. Hello, Shaz from the UK. Nice to see you. Who else is here? We've got Doris and Debbie and Penny. Welcome, everyone. All right, enough talking from me. I'm going to flip the camera, show you the bundle, and then we are going to get to some stamping. So give me one sec here. I will work my magic. sure we get that centered there we go a little saggy so we'll just move that up a bit there we go perfect all right so here is the layout for this bundle in the catalog now it's not part of a suite um but it certainly is a beautiful bundle and it coordinates with so many beautiful papers um from both the annual and the mini catalog you're going to see that today um the bundle includes the stamp set and dies i'm going to show them to you up close and personal right now so the stamp set is simply gorgeous. Um, we have this larger dahlia, several flower images, sprigs and greenery. This tag is absolutely fabulous. I love it. I will show you a project. We're not going to actually, we are going to use it, but we're not going to use this part of it. Um, I'll show you another project where I did something kind of cool with that at the end. And then some really pretty um, sentiments in lovely fonts. So there's our stamp set. And then, of course, we have the die set. So often, die sets would be just this, right? They would cut out all of the stamped images, and that's all you would get. But you get a bonus, gorgeous, detailed Dahlia die. Um, this is absolutely stunning. You're going to see it in action on a couple of projects today. Um, and that is an added bonus in this die set. So you get all of these dies um, included in the set with the bundle. Okay, so that is that. We'll set those aside. And I wanted to really showcase the stamp set. So the first project we're going to make doesn't even use the dies, okay? It just really features the gorgeous stamp set. And this is like as minimal as I get. <laughs> There are, there's, you could totally do this with no layers, but I, you know, I'm me and I can't, I can't function without having at least one layer. So, um, this is, this technique is called faux torn paper. It looks like there's a torn layer here, but this is actually just one layer of cardstock. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Um, we're also going to do some masking on the Dahlia. So I've got my trusty post-it notes at the ready here. Um, I, I saved mine from when I was making my sample, so I didn't have to. Fussy cut more dahlias. So we're going to start with just a piece of basic white cardstock. 
It is four by five and a quarter. Okay. And then I have, these are my large post-it notes. I got these at um, Staples here in Canada. I'm, I'm going to lay my post-it note across the bottom left corner. So here's my I'll turn it right ways up so it's it's a portrait. So I'm going to lay this along the bottom left corner of my piece of cardstock. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my blending brush and we're going to blend out a bit of a background here. I didn't want it to be stark. I didn't want my images to be on white. Um, and so then I thought, oh, it would be fun to do this faux torn paper technique, which I haven't done in a while. So I'm just going to take my blending brushes and I'm going to start adding just really subtle color to my background. So this is Pool Party ink. There is cat hair in my blending brush. Welcome to my craft room where the cats have zero respect for my space. Like they're, oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to take my tweezers and pick all the cat hair off my ink pad. It's appalling. But, you know, we love them, right? This was probably Phoebe. Phoebe is, um, I don't know if you're following me on social media, but I posted this weekend's Phoebe doing her best to keep me from working. She is very good at that. She likes to just park herself on my desk or on my shoulder or around my neck. She's just a master of um, making sure <laughs> she has my attention. And she's shedding right now because tis the season here in Southern Ontario. And yeah, there's cat hair everywhere. So I'm just laying down some really subtle color. I don't want this to be too dark because I don't really want it to affect the colors of the inks that I'm going to stamp with. Uh, but I just want to have a little bit of shading on my background. And I'm taking care to really make sure I'm going along that torn edge because that's going to really bring out that faux torn paper look. So I'm just... Coming along here. Oh, it certainly is their space. I'm just, a, I, I'm a, a, a tenant in the space. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they um, pretty much rule the roost around here. Spoiled princesses, the pair of them. All right, so there we go. Look at, can you see all the cat hair? Look at it all. One, two, there's like three pieces, four pieces of cat hair. Whatever. Okay. So there we go. I'm not taking this off because we're going to do our whole, all our stamping and everything and then remove this at the end. Okay. All right. So we've got our background down. Next, we're going to stamp our dahlias and I am sort of celebrating outgoing in colors. So I'm using on this card, three outgoing in colors. These are ones that will be retiring with this annual catalog. So we have Magenta Madness, Bumblebee and Just Jade. Now, I am going to miss these in colors big time. I'm really going to miss Magenta Madness and Just Jade. Bumblebee, I love. It's very close to Crush Curry. Um, so I feel like this one I'm not going to miss quite as much. But these two, absolutely. I love the vibrance of Magenta Madness. So we are using that one today. And I'm going to ink up my Dahlia. Here, I'll move this over so you can kind of see what, they're, what we're aiming for here. Um, I'm going to ink up my dolly. I'm going to stamp it three times. Now, one of the sort of secrets when you're doing this kind of um, collage stamping or you're trying to create um, the look of like DSP is to make sure some of your images extend off the edge of your cardstock. Okay, um, that's going to give a sense of motion. It's going to ground your images so they don't look like they're kind of floating in space. And um, it's just going to make your design more visually appealing. So I'm stamping my Dahlia. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my mask. Now I just need to give one second for that ink to dry just a bit or my masks won't stick. So to make my masks, I have post-it notes that are sticky. They're three by three post-it notes and they're sticky. The entire back is sticky, um, which are awesome for making masks. So I stamp my image and then I fussy cut it. And you're going to see, I actually fussy cut it over the outline. So I actually cut in. Um, and that is so that when I layer this on my image, well, I got that right the first time. That doesn't happen very often. I usually end up spinning it around trying to figure out which way it lines up. Uh, don't worry, I've got another one that I'll mess up, guaranteed. Um, when I lay it over my image, you see how I can still see a little bit of the stamped image underneath? That is because when I go to stamp my leaves and whatnot, see how here I didn't have my mask lined up quite properly? And just see how there's a little bit of the um, leaf missing there? But on the other spots, they actually come right up to the edge of my petals, which is what I actually want 
um, when I'm stamping my leaves. So let me see if I can get, ooh, that one's actually, nope, that one's not quite right. See, this is what I typically have to do is I spin it around and around until I find <laughs> the way that it layers. Because you wanna be as precise as possible with this so that you get your, oh, there we go. That's the right way. So that you get um, as much of your image covered as possible. We're, we're gonna do this one after, um, but I'll do these guys first, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is bring in my Just Jade ink pad. Now this one I just re-inked, so I re-inked it since I made my sample. So these leaves are probably gonna be a little bit darker than the ones on my sample, but that's okay. So we're gonna add a few leaves to this, Dahlia. Oh yeah, they're lots darker, that's all right. Still works. We'll add a couple of leaves here. And you'll notice I'm purposely overlapping my mask as I'm stamping these. Let's do one this way. Okay, and when I take my mask off, you're going to see that my image, my leaf image goes right up to the edge of my flower image. Okay, we will do this bottom one in a minute. So that's our Just Jade. Then we're going to bring in, where's my little sprig? This little guy, to me it almost looks like um, evergreen branches. Um, so I'm gonna bring in this one and some shaded spruce, which works really beautifully with Just Jade. So we're going to add a couple of these little guys. Now this one could use re-inking. It's looking a little on the dry side. So we'll stamp a few of these little guys. We're gonna add one here. And we'll add another one over here. I mean, they're flowers, right? There's not really a wrong way to do it. And then we're going to bring in this little guy, another little sprig, and I'm going to use some Granny Apple Green. Oh, hi, Laurel. Oh, look, more cat hair. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, I'm gonna have to spring clean all of my ink pads to get rid of all the little gifts these two are leaving behind here. So I'm adding a couple of these little sprigs in the granny apple green. I'm going to overlap a little bit here. The beauty of using a darker and a lighter shade is that we can overlap and they layer quite nicely. You don't really lose the image. There we go. Okay, then I'm gonna grab this little mask here and we are going to layer it over this Dahlia. Oh, look at that, got it lined up. And we're going to quickly add a couple of additional sprigs and leaves to this one. So I'll bring back my Just Jade. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hope you are well. So we're going to add some leaves here. And get rid of that. We'll add a couple of sprigs with the shaded spruce. I'm taking my life in my hands here with all these ink pads open. My rule of thumb is no more than one ink pad open at a time. <laughs> because bad things happen when I um, have multiple ink pads open. And any of you probably can relate um, when you mistakenly ink up the wrong color. Yeah, happens to be more than I care to admit. So let's add these little guys. There we go, okay. Oh, you know what, we need some more of these little guys over here. Oh, no we can't, because I already took off the mask. Never mind. I stopped myself, I almost made a big boo-boo. All right, so there are our sprigs and flowers. So now I'm going to come in with this little bitty flower stamp here and some bumblebee ink, and we're going to add just some of these little, they almost look like little daisies. So we're just gonna add a couple of these little guys sort of scattered in amongst our larger flowers. My bumblebee's getting dry. Now, speaking of dry ink pads, if you have these current in color ink pads and you don't have reinkers for them, I would strongly recommend ordering them sooner than later because the first thing that sells out are the reinkers re and then the ink pads. Okay, so if you don't have reinkers for the current ink colors, I would strongly recommend ordering them like today. <laughs> That's my public service announcement. Uh, yes, the cat hair is very special. It is so special. All right, you make ready for the big reveal. Uh, we are going to take our Dahlia masks off first. Okay, so do you see how the leaves just sort of disappear behind the flower? Isn't that cool? I love masking. It's such a cool technique. Um, the first time I did, I was like, how does that work? So, so neat. So we're going to take this guy off too. Okay, and then we're going to pull off 
our large post-it. And there we go. There's our faux torn paper. Isn't that the coolest? I love this technique. All right, all we have left to do is stamp our sentiment. Uh, we're gonna stamp sending lots of love and I'm gonna use the shaded spruce just cause it's a nice dark rich green. We'll ink that up. It's a dark rich green when you have a juicy ink pad. This one is not so juicy, but that's okay. So we're gonna stamp this right in the space that we left with our post-it note. And then we are going to layer it. Isn't it a cool technique? It's such a wow technique, Tracy, and it's so easy. Like there's really nothing to it. You just have to remember to put your mask on. All right, <laughs> speaking of masks. Yeah, COVID, masking. Yeah, never mind. We're not gonna talk about that. All right, so we have another layer. Um, I, I told you, I can't, I have a very hard time doing like single layer cards. So we're gonna have one extra layer here. Um, this is pool party cardstock. It is four and a quarter. No, I lied. It is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And we're going to layer our stamped piece right on top. So we'll just grab a little bit of seal here and we'll pop this on, hopefully with an equal border. And then I just have a thick basic white card base here. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we're going to fold that in half along our score line and we're going to pop this on to the front of our card and we will be done. Now, of course, I have to add a little something something. You're going to see what I'm going to do. So as you probably know, if you followed me for any length of time, I'm a big fan of Wayne Costella. Okay, so what I am going to do, this is one of my favorite techniques, is now you could do this still with the mask on. Um, I tend to be a little bit careful when I'm flicking it. I didn't get too much on my white surface, but I'm going to take my Wink of Style. I want to make sure that it is flowing so that there's some in the barrel. And then I'm just going to take and I'm going to flick the brush against the lid so that I get little drops of yumminess all over here. Okay, now this won't show very well on the camera, uh, but you're going to have to take my word for it. It is lovely and shimmery and sparkly and just so nummy. All right, so let me quick show you what I did on the inside. I actually um, did the reverse technique, so same idea, but I laid my, um, my uh, post-it note this way so that I kind of got the extra corner. So it kind of looks like the corner that I ripped off here, I used on the inside of my card. Okay, so just a fun little way to decorate the inside of your card on a really, really basic, basic card design. Okay, all right. Hi, June. Better late than never. That's what replays are for, right? All right, so let's get some things out of the way here. I'm going to need a couple of these ink pads for later, and I need to clean a couple of stamps. So let me put these aside. I'll put them over here so that I can bring them back later. And I need my, where to put my cleaner? It's over there, hang on. We are going to need to clean our Dahlia because we are not using Magenta Madness on our next card. So let's give this a quick scrub. And we'll clean up all of our sprigs too. If you do not have a chamois yet, you need to invest in one. They are th these are this is my original chamois, you guys. I have not had to replace it. <laughs> I've had it for what? How long have we had these? Like four years, maybe. Um, it's fantastic. All you do is rinse it when it gets too goopy, and away you go. It's fantastic. All right, moving on. Next card we're gonna do is this one. This is one I posted yesterday, I believe. And I was playing around with spring colors. For me, Easter and spring is all about like soft purples and greens. I don't know why. Maybe it's because um, hyacinths and crocuses tend to be the first flowers that bloom here in Ontario. And they tend to be purples and pinks. So that's for me what what's the first sign of spring is. So that's what I was going for on this card. So I have already done most of the stamping and die cutting. But I am going to show you how I got this sort of variegated or ombre look on my dahlia. So I'm going to just show you real quick how to do that. So this is just a little scrap. Well, it's not a scrap. It's a piece of basic white cardstock that I'm going to use to stamp on. And the colors that I'm using, oh, where did I put my, hold the phone. 
my Fresh Freesia. There we go. So the colors that I'm using are shades of purple. So we have Fresh Freesia, Highland Heather, and Gorgeous Grape. Okay, they look, oh, these two look like the same color, uh, but they're not. This one's quite a bit darker. And I'm gonna bring in my Dahlia stamp and I'm going to be using my sponge daubers. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is ink up my Dahlia using my Fresh Freesia ink. Okay, so we'll ink this up. And then I'm going to bring in my Highland Heather ink pad and my dauber. And I'm going to ink, so I'll just show you on the stamp. So you see how there's one, two, three layers of petals on this stamp? So I'm going to ink with the Highland Heather, that middle layer, or well, the top two layers, I guess. So I'm just gonna kind of take care to ink just those petals. Then I'm going to bring in my gorgeous grape and my dauber, and I'm going to ink just the center, just the top layer of petals. Okay, and when I stamp that, you're gonna see that we get that beautiful three shaded dahlia, okay? Now you can do this with any similar shades. They don't even have to be similar. You could do it with like yellows and reds or yellows and oranges, um, yellows and browns. There are some beautiful um, brown and yellow um, dahlias. So lots of possibilities for color combos with this, but just a really easy way to get beautiful um, ombre shading. Okay. Now we are going to need to use this to stamp our labels. So this is that fantastic label stamp that I mentioned earlier. Um, I am going to ink up my stamp using Evening Evergreen. Now this is another pad that is fairly dry. I need to spend some time re-inking and cleaning cat hair off them clearly. So there is my stamped image. Now, isn't that beautiful? I just love that. Now, sadly on this card, we're not gonna see it. We're actually gonna use it to glue our Dahlia onto. Um, but I wanted to show you just what, how beautiful that stamped image is, okay? Now, there is a die that coordinates with this, but I don't really need to worry about die cutting. I'm just gonna fussy cut this out because it's probably faster and easier. So I'm just gonna come in and cut around my label. It's just straight lines, so this is like the easiest thing to fussy cut. I'll come down here, and then straight across, and then on an angle, and I'm not worried about cutting out these flowers at all, okay, because we're going to cover them. Um, as I mentioned, we're just going to use this, the flower sort of as a spot to glue our dahlia on, okay? Now, I've already um, die cut a dahlia, so I've got it here. All right, so there's our dahlia and all of our little sprigs. Again, it's just faster and easier if I die cut them ahead of time. So we are going to do a little floral arranging. I know how much you guys love that. Before we do, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Now my sentiment says, thank you for your kindness. Now, I only want to thank you on this one. Um, so I'm going to use my Evening Evergreen Stampin' Right marker to ink just the thank you portion. Now there are a few ways to do partial inking. Um, you can use post-it notes and an ink pad. So post-it notes to mask the part of the stamp that you don't want. Um, this one's a little bit harder because of the font. Um, the font kind of interlocks a little bit. So for this one, the easiest way to do partial inking is with a Stampin' Right marker. Um, you always wanna use the brush tip, okay? We have a writing tip. Don't use that end. You will never get enough ink. You always wanna use the brush tip. And you'll notice that when I'm inking, I'm doing it on the side of the tip rather than right on the end. And that's so that I don't damage the tip. Okay, so then I'm just gonna huff on that for a minute and I'm going to stamp my thank you on my label, just like that. Okay, all right, now we're going to arrange some, flat, some leaves and whatnot on our dahlia. So I'm going to add some seal to the back of my dahlia, kind of all the way around. I find this the easiest way to do my arranging because then I'm not having to continuously stop to add more adhesive. Okay, so there, whoops, I want some more leaves. There are my leaves, okay. And then we're going to add some of these little sprigs. So these guys are stamped in Evening Evergreen. These little ones are stamped in um, Soft Succulents, okay? And then I have some little purple flowers. These ones are stamped in Highland Heather. So they're gonna kind of nestle in behind there as well. We're gonna add this little guy. And I'm gonna have to add a little bit more adhesive here to get my flower to stick. 
this one's gonna kind of tuck in here just like that okay so there's our little dolly arrangement not rocket science not hard to do um, and then we're gonna go ahead and actually glue that to this little um, sort of bit that I left and didn't fussy cut on the label okay and that's gonna allow us to have something to glue our dahlia onto so we're just gonna take and add a little bit of seal and arrange that on there just like that not pretty so easy all right let's put together the rest of our card I'll set that aside for a minute so these little strips anybody want to guess what uh, designer series paper these are from um, I did not fussy cut them Laurel I used the dies I just did that did it ahead of time um, just to make it faster and easier <laughs> so you don't have to watch me doing all the die cutting on camera okay all right, so um, anybody guess what uh, DSP this pretty sort of watercolor wash is from? Anybody guess? New Horizon, Joyce got it on the first try. All right, so these were scraps that were left over from another project, and they're actually quite pretty on the back. It's like a sky, almost sunset look, but I really loved the shades of purple on, hit, on here because it works so well with my Dahlia. So these are cut to four by one and a quarter inches. There's just four strips, and I tried to cut them um, not all the same so it didn't look really uniform. This piece is four by five and a quarter inches. It is Fresh Freesia cardstock. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by gluing a piece on either end flush with the edges and the end, just like that. Okay. Then these two pieces are going to come in and I'm going to space them equidistantly. Okay. So let's go ahead and glue those. I'm going to use some liquid glue just so that I can wiggle these into place. Oh, Doris guessed marble. That's a good guess, Doris. But Joyce had it. The marble does, has a little bit more defined pattern in it. This has got a real watercolor wash look, and it's really pretty. Okay, so there's one. We're going to add our other one on the other end. It's going to go right flush with the edges. Okay, and then these guys are going to get spaced evenly in between. I find it easiest to glue the end pieces on first. And then it's easy to kind of space out to the other. So once those are kind of positioned where I want them, that's going to move. So we'll do this one first. And we'll pop this guy on here. Just like that. Okay, and then this one is going to get centered between the other two. Let's see, yeah, we'll do that this way. So I'm trying to make sure my paper doesn't look super uniform. These two pieces look fairly similar, but that's okay. We can hide that. Okay, so there's my background. Now I wanted to add a little bit of texture. I'm not sure how well it shows, but there is some texture on that background. So we're gonna bring in the cut and emboss. And we are going to just run this through really quickly using our tasteful textile embossing folder. This is one of my, my favorite folders just for adding really subtle texture. So I'm just going to place the whole thing into my folder. I've got my platform, my folder, and then my specialty plate. And we're just going to run that through. And we'll get this guy out of the way. And we'll pop this out and you're going to see the beautiful texture that results. So there it is. So it adds just a really pretty, um, almost fabric-like texture to the, the background. Okay. All right. Next, I have half of one of those gorgeous detailed die cuts. So this was that sort of bonus die in this set. Um, I've just cut half of it and I have adhesive sheets on the back. So I'm going to take my chances and peel off my backing and hope that all those little bits come off. Usually they do. Um, you don't have to sit and poke all those little bits out, usually. However, now that I'm on live camera, who knows? Yep, see, look, they stuck. <laughs> of course they did. All right, let's get rid of those guys. There's not too many of them. We'll just get rid of those extra bits. There we go. Now they're stuck to my finger. <laughs> okay, so this is going to get stuck right along the edge. Now, I said I wanted to hide. Yeah, these two are quite uniform. So we're going to actually stick this down to hide the fact that these two strips are pretty much the same. So we're just going to stick that down right along the edge. Okay, so this is literally half of the die cut. I um, just put it onto my cardstock and then cut it in half. Okay, so 
you get with one run through, you get two cards out of it, right? Okay, then we're going to add a little bit of ribbon. So this, I am so hoping this ribbon doesn't retire. I love this ribbon so much. This is the In Color Open Weave Ribbon. Um, this is the Soft Succulent. It's just such pretty, shimmery, um, soft, easy to tie ribbon. It's just, it's one of my all-time favorites. And of course, I forgot to bring my ribbon scissors. So we're just going to use our snips. And add another glue dot to this end. It is close to the tulip paper laurel. It's a little bit lighter. The tulip paper is a little bit darker, uh, but you could totally get away with using the tulip paper on this design. Absolutely. Okay, so there is our card front. Before we go any further, we're going to glue that down onto our card base. Um, this is another basic white card base. This time it's five and a half by eight and a half. So it's a, a landscape orientation. Scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold that in half along our score line and add a little adhesive. Now you want to go slow with seal when you are um, dealing with embossed cardstock. It tends, if you go too fast, to peel up your cardstock, which is not what we want. So we'll just layer that centered on our card front, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to bring in our beautiful little dahlia arrangement here. We're going to pop it up with some dimensionals. So we'll just add a couple of these guys. You want to make sure you're popping up your um, all your sprigs and leaves too, so that they all stay put. And we'll get rid of our backings. Come on. There we go. And we're going to pop this on right about there hopefully straight ish and then we're gonna add a cute little bow this is my favorite ribbon to tie bows with because it's so so easy so we'll make our bunny ears and tie a sweet little bow um, I love how tightly I can pull my knot um, with this ribbon it just makes for a really sweet bow so we'll trim off our tails again using my snips, not my ribbon scissors. It's a little bit harder to do with snips. And then we're going to add a glue dot. And we're going to pop that on just sort of where the ribbon and the tag meet there. Isn't that pretty? The last little touch a little bit of bling. Now I wanted to kind of bring out the evening evergreen in this. So I'm actually using some of the in color gems and I'm going to use, I could, any of these would work, right? Any, there's the um, soft succulent, the fresh freesia or the evergreen. Any of them would work, but I decided I wanted to use the evergreen and just kind of bring out um, that dark green in the leaves. So I'm just going to add a couple of these little guys here and there. And there we go. Pretty, pretty thank you card with the Dahlia set. You like that one? All right. Glad you like. Let's move on. One more. Again, I'm going to have to clean a couple stamps. Uh, actually, no, I don't because I did the die cut. Well, no, I did the die cutting ahead of time. We're good. All right. So last one we're going to do is this one. I posted it earlier today. Um, I was just so crushing on this gorgeous die cut that I decided to make a peek through card with it. Um, not hard to do at all. I've done most of the die cutting ahead of time again, just in the interest of time, but I'm going to explain how I did it. Okay. So to start, I started with just a thick basic white card base. Okay. Four and a quarter by 11 inches. And then I had a piece of DSP. This is actually from the pattern party set. Um, it's the host um, DSP pack in the annual catalog. Love that pack. I'm going to be sad when it retires. Um, so this is cut to four by five and a quarter. So what I did is I just took and put a little bit of seal in the middle of my paper and I centered it on my card front. Okay. Exactly where I wanted it to go and just kind of stuck it down. Then I ran the whole thing through my die cutting machine using the stitched rectangles dies. Okay. And that gives me, um, a frame that will perfectly layer. Okay. Um, you can totally cut a layer of DSP and a layer of cardstock, um, in one pass. I wouldn't do two layers of cardstock, but a layer of DSP and a layer of cardstock totally works. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my card base in half just so that I have it ready to go. And then I have my frame here. Now I just want to make sure this is actually directionally specific DSP and I want to make sure my vines are going upwards. 
So it's going to go on just like that. But first we have to add our beautiful die cut. So this is what that gorgeous detailed Dahlia die looks like once it is run through and all the bits are poked out. Um, this is just basic white cardstock. Okay. It works both ways. It also works horizontally. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take my seal and on my card base, I'm just going to run some seal all the way around that window that I cut. So I'm just kind of going all the way around. I'm making sure that I'm up close to the window, not close to the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to take my beautiful die cut and I'm going to just center that over my window and just press it into place. Okay. Now there's a couple of little sprigs that are going to come fairly close to the edge and I want to cut those off just so that when I add my frame, I don't see them peeking out from underneath. Okay. So I'm just going to trim a couple of those little bits off just to be safe. Uh, maybe get rid of this little guy too, because I don't want to see them peeking out. Okay. All right. So that is all there is to it. Now I'm going to take and layer my frame on. I'm going to add some more seal because I want to make sure I get this securely adhered. So we'll just run some seal around our frame. And this is where you really want to take your time to get this centered properly. Okay, so I'm not looking at this detailed die cut. I'm looking at the opening that I cut. And I'm basically trying to line up, and this is hard to do when I can't look straight down. Um, I'm trying to line up that opening with my DSP. So I just want to make sure, and I'm not going to press this down just yet, just so that I can make sure that actually looks pretty good. So once I have it where I want it, then I can burnish it and make sure that it's secure. Okay, and what that does, it gives us a nice clean look on the back and a nice clean look on the front. Okay, so we're kind of sandwiching that detailed die cut between the cardstock and the DSP. Isn't that pretty? Oh, so gorgeous. Okay. Oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. It is a great bundle. And honestly, if you have the, the Dahlia stamp set from Celebration last year, it is a really great compliment to it. It just works really well. All right. So now I have already stamped and die cut three Dahlias and some leaves and some flowers. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we want to make sure when we're adhering our dahlias, I'm going to show you on the inside of this. Do you see how you can't see any adhesive here? Okay. So we need to make sure when we're gluing these on that our adhesive is only going on the frame. Okay. We don't want to put the adhesive all over the back of the dahlia and then stick it down because we're going to have glue or whatever oozing through that beautiful die cut. Okay, so we just have to be a little bit strategic when we're doing this. So this top corner one, we're going to glue um, one set of leaves here. We're going to add our, die, our dahlia and then we're going to add a little yellow flower down here. Okay, so I'm first going to add a little bit of adhesive to the front of my yellow flower. These are stamped in bumblebee. Again, I'm celebrating outgoing in colors. Uh, the blue is misty moonlight. Uh, the yellow is bumblebee and the green is just jade once again. So again, I'm going to glue this to the back of my dahlia. All right. And then I'm going to add my leaves as well. So I'm going to add just a little bit of adhesive to the stem of my leaves. And we're going to pop that on right about there. Okay. Now when I go to glue this onto my card, I'm only going to put glue on the frame. So I'm just going to take and run a little bit of glue right around the frame like this, be down a little bit further. And I might put a little dab in the center of that dahlia, just a teeny dab. And then we're going to layer that on there. And that's going to secure our dahlia, but it's not going to allow any adhesive to bleed through our detailed die cut. Okay, so you just want to be careful when you're using this kind of technique and think about what the inside of the card is going to look like. Okay, all right, so here we're going to add some leaves again to the frame. So we'll add these guys here. And then we're going to glue a couple of little yellow flowers to the back of our dahlia. 
So these are, this one's going to kind of tuck up here. I, don't, I want to be able to see my yellow flower. I don't want it to get covered by my label. So this one's going to kind of go like this. Okay. So again, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue along the edge here and a little titch on the stem of my leaves. And then this one is going to get glued on right. Oh, let's rotate that just a bit. Don't want to lose my yellow flower. I think I'm going to lose my yellow flower. I should have turned it more. Oh, well. All right. And then same thing down in this corner. So we're going to add our leaves kind of going up this way. So we'll add a set of leaves here. That may need to be a bit higher so our dahlia doesn't cover them completely. Yeah, let's put that a bit higher. There we go. The beauty of liquid glue, people. <laughs> you get to move it. All right, and then we're going to add just a titch of glue here for our yellow flower. So it's gonna go down here. And then our dahlia, again, is going to go on right in the corner. So we're going to add just a little bit around the frame. And we're gonna pop that on just like that. Okay, and again, when I open it up, I don't see any adhesive, I don't have any mess. Okay, just a really important tip when you're doing this technique. All right, let's set this aside. We're gonna work on our label. So this is just a um, stitched rectangle cut from basic white cardstock. This time we are going to use the full, thank you for your kindness, stamp. And we'll clean this because we still have Evening Evergreen on it. I'm going to bring in my Misty Moonlight. We're going to stamp our greeting in the Misty Moonlight. So let's center that on there. Oopsie. There we go. And then we're going to add just like a little bit, a little corner of the leaves on either end. So I'll bring, oh, is that the right color? Yes, it is. Is it? <laughs> I'm second guessing myself. Nope, that's shaded spruce. Where's my just jade on? Where are you just jade? There you are. All right, so we'll ink up our leaves. We're gonna add just a little hint of leaf here and a little bit on this end. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring back that little bitty flower stamp and my bumblebee ink. And we're gonna add just a couple of them. So we'll do a couple there and maybe one there. And we'll do one up here because the ribbon is gonna cover part of that one. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Now, again, we need to be careful when we are attaching this to our card. So we are going to put this on so that it overlaps the dahlias and the frame. Okay, we're not gonna put it right, put glue right across the back. So I'm gonna put mini dimensionals on both ends. So one, two, and three, four. And then we are going to stick this down so that it overlaps the frame and our dahlia. Okay. Again, making sure that we don't want to see those mini dimensionals through the die cut from the back side. Okay. So we'll get rid of our backings. And we're going to pop this on. Right about there looks good. Make sure it's straight. There we go. And then the last little touch is to add some ribbon, which I didn't bring over here apparently. Where is it? Where are you, Ribbon? I thought I brought, oh, yes, I did bring it over. It's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> Couldn't see the forest for the trees, people. All right, let's take our cute bumblebee gingham ribbon. This is another one I'm gonna miss because I use it a ton. Again, for me, gingham equals spring and Easter. So we're gonna tie a cute little bow. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so that it doesn't overwhelm the front of our card. And again, trim our ends. Man, I don't have my ribbon scissors. I sure miss them. All right, we're going to take and add a glue dot to our bow. And then we're gonna tuck that just in the corner here, just like that, okay? Now, if you wanted to, and well, you know I want to, um, you could add a little bit of Wink of Stella. So instead of brushing it on, I'm just gonna take and do a little flicky flicky on each flower. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't wanna run the blue ink okay I don't want to end up like I want the the flowers to still look really clean and crisp okay and then the last touch are some yellow this is actually the um pale papaya um, in color gems but they totally work on as a yellow on this card so I'm just gonna add a couple of these little guys oh, we'll put this guy we'll put him right here 
no, we'll put them, uh, let's think about this. Where is it going to look best? I think we'll put it down here. All right, there we go. There's our finished card. You like that one? Now I left the inside of this one blank because um, you are going to see whatever's on the inside. Obviously when you write your greeting, it's going to peek through, but I kind of like that. I like that um, the recipient will be able to see the greeting peeking through before they open it. All right, let me bring back all of our projects. Thank you, Karen. I'm glad you like them. So here are our three projects for today. So super simple, just with some masking um, and then really showcasing the beautiful die cuts in this set. Now let me show you, this is my very favorite card that I made. Um, this is one that uses that beautiful um, label shape, but I actually flipped it the other way. So my flowers are on the bottom left and then I wanted to get variation in color and I tried actually inking with markers, but I wasn't getting a really nice crisp image. So instead I stamped the label twice, fussy cut out the dahlia and layered it and then added a couple of these little flowers uh, because there's a die to cut them out. Okay, so that's just an idea for um, how you can add some color to that label. And of course, there are the more gorgeous, gorgeous dahlias. And oh, how yummy is this satin ribbon? So, so love it. Okay, so there's some idea. Oh, one more. Sorry, forgot. This was left over with all the bits that I had left from designing these. So I had just some scraps laying on my car, on my desk. And sometimes I like to challenge myself to use up my bits and pieces. So this isn't a super awesome card design, but it's still really simple. And I wanted to point out how beautifully two DSPs work together. This is New Horizons. This is Waves of the Ocean. So again, scraps that were left from other projects and I layer them and look how fantastic that looks. Like what a great Easter card. Love it. All right. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed those ladies. And I will see you again next week. Next week I'll be on March break. So I won't sound quite so, you know, not quite all there. I'll be, I'll be much more relaxed. <laughs> all right, everybody have a great week and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday live at five. Bye for now.